All right, man, peace. So it's becoming more and more apparent as the NBA season starts to reach its culmination that the Oklahoma City Thunder are not the team that many of us thought they would be. I myself thought that they would win at least 51 to 52 games. I didn't think that they would be that good in the regular season because of the style of play of their main three players and also due to the megalomaniacal mentality of Mr. Russell Westbrook. But I did think, and I still do think to a degree, that they're going to be a very difficult team to play in the playoffs. Because what they do best is going to come out in the playoffs. That being physicality and one-on-one play. In the playoffs, the teams that are able to execute their team systems, of course, we know that they're the teams that end up winning. But it also takes a high level of individual talent and skill. Now, OKC is not going to execute on a high level. We know that. But as individual players, their starting five is as good as any starting five in the NBA. So I do believe that if they're able to get to a point where they can play Golden State in the second round, or maybe even, maybe even the first round, the way this is going, because if Golden State finishes with a two seed and OKC has a seven seed, of course, they're going to meet in the first round. But that's a ways down the line. I do believe that they're going to give Golden State everything that they can ask for, no matter when they play them. But they just don't have what it takes to execute because of Russell Westbrook. And I've said this over and over and over again. He plays great, but he is not a great player. He does not know what to do in adverse situations because his brain just does not function on a microcosmic level. When the situation becomes highly pressurized, his vision, his court vision does not expand. It actually contracts and he's only able to see the hoop. He's not able to see his other teammates. And that's what frustrates them about Russell, who seems like a nice guy, quote unquote. But he does not have the court awareness to involve all his teammates in proper time. His assists are cheap assists. But anyway, they're going to talk about it and I'm going to chime in. Now, remember back at the beginning of the season when there was so much excitement about the Oklahoma City Thunder? Sam Presti's riverboat gamble of first swiping Paul George from Indy, then collecting Carmelo. I mean, it was downright tantalizing. Vegas odd makers raised OKC's chances of winning the title from 60 to 1 to 16 to 1. Yeah, it was fun when Presti was able to get those players, those quote, those quote unquote big names. But the OKC Thunder are like an ensemble cast in a major motion picture that you're not quite sure is going to work. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. It depends on how giving each actor is willing to be. And I just don't think that Westbrook has what it takes. I always say this, every generation, you have players that fill certain roles. Like when I was growing up, the crazy guy was Dennis Rodman. And then he got replaced by Ron Artest. And now you have guys like Lance Stevenson or Draymond Green who fill that crazy guy role. You know, that crazy guy who can play roles. So I probably would omit Lance Stevenson. But Draymond kind of is this generation's... Dennis Rodman slash Ron Artest, the defensive mastermind who loses it, who snaps. Russell Westbrook is this generation's Allen Iverson. He's the guy who goes out there and gets buckets. He has a huge cult of personality, but he's missing that certain something, that, that as they call it, that je ne sais quoi. What separates the great players, the championship level players, from the other guys, the guys that you like to watch in the regular season. That's why I liken him onto a great action movie. I say this all the time. If you're sitting at home, you know, for whatever reason, you're off from work or you're just chilling out at your crib and you flip around, you catch Rambo, First Blood is on or Commando starring Honest What's Nigga, you'll watch it because it's entertaining. Even though you've seen it before, you know how it's going to end. The same thing with Russell Westbrook. You see him one game, you've seen them all. He does the same moves every game. You know, he's going to he drives the basket. He wants to dunk over everybody. He's going to get his little cheap dump off assist to Steven Adams. Playoffs are going to come. He's going to go out in five games. Flash forward to last night when the only serious title contender on Oklahoma City's floor appeared to be the visitors. Yes, the Thunder had the score close in the third, but Houston then went on a run that looked so effortless. I mean, it's kind of like someone changed the video game setting over to rookie mode right there in the middle of the court. You could see the frustration just building on the Thunder player faces. As- yes, because it was the difference between a great playground team, which is what OKC is, and a team that actually executes, knows where every other member of their team is supposed to be on the floor, passes them the ball with proper timing, has distance, and has great shooters. OKC doesn't have that. 
They have two guys who can shoot, but they're not shooters. Carmelo Anthony and Paul George can shoot, but they're not shooters. You know, they want the rock. And that's why neither one of them will be back in OKC next season. And you know what I think? That not only is that best for them, I think it's also best for West Brick. And I think it's best for the NBA. I think that West Brick is a solo act. I think he should stay a solo act. I think that he should, <laughs> he should shake off the idea that he's going to win a championship because he's not. And I don't think particularly that he's that concerned winning a championship unless it's his way. And he's never going to win a championship his way because he doesn't understand proper timing. Timing is everything. I don't care how high you can jump, how fast you can run. If you don't master the cadence of the game, you're never going to win. Magic, Bird, Jordan, Isaiah Thomas, Hakeem Olajuwon, Shaq and Kobe, Tim Duncan, they mastered the cadence of the game. They knew how to, they knew how to take over the game through timing. They could make you play at whatever pace or rate they wanted you to play at. Like when you watch a great boxing match, Muhammad Ali could make you box at his rate. Floyd Mayweather, he slows down his opponent. That's why they always say, wow, the punch stats drop when fighters face Floyd. Why? Because he makes them fight how he wants the fight to go. Westbrook doesn't comprehend that. I'm not trying to slam him. He's a great talent. But he's the Allen Iverson of his generation. He's a great action movie. But he's never going to win an Oscar. When you want to see what teams can win an Oscar, you look at Boston. They're a player away. Golden State. Houston. Those are, those are Oscar-worthy movies right there. Westbrook, he's just a great action movie. This has reabsorbed all the blows. And actually, I got to be honest, you could hear it too. This is a family show, so we're going to put a bleep in there as we show you Mellow on one of James Harden's drives. Yeah, you send them one way, you saying, where's the help? I hope that you're yelling at Steven Adams where the F was the help, because according to the defensive game plan before the game, you were supposed to send him that way. That's why I hope you're yelling at him, Mello, because you're not known for playing good defense. But that's a sign of a fractured team when, when uh, the team is not working together on defense, when they're not covering for each other. It's very obvious that Steven Adams didn't go to help when Harden was driving because he already knew that if he helped, Harden was going to throw the lob and he was going to end up looking bad. So Steven Adams understands that if he helps, there's no one that's going to help him in the background. Very unfortunate for the OKC Thunder that we're, you know, that we're at around the 60-game mark and they still don't know who's supposed to help. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into the irony. Or not willing to help. Irony of Carmelo Anthony chastising Stephen Adams on defense. But Look, even Rachel Nichols is sending out darts at Carmelo about his defense. That's crazy. But obviously, look, I mean, the Rockets do make it really hard to help in that scenario. That is part of why they are so lethal. And of course, Oklahoma City is missing its best defender. By the way, if you're one of those people who didn't think it was a big deal when Andre Robertson went down for the season with that exploding knee, take a look at his impact on the Thunder's defensive efficiency. With Robertson, they were at 102.6. That was fifth best in the NBA. In the stretch since he got hurt, they're 109.2. Now, how bad is 109.2? Well, no NBA team has made the playoffs with a defensive rating that bad in the last 30 years. Well, what that tells me is that Mr. Russell Westbrook does not play very good defense. We already know that Carmelo Anthony plays little to no defense. And they were trying to campaign for Paul George being a possible defensive player of the year. I think that they're still campaigning for that. All I hear about is how he's leading the league in steals and that he should be defensive player of the year. So if he's playing that great a defense and they're that bad in defense, one must wonder who is it on their team that's not playing good on defense? We have to look at Westbrook. We have to look at Carmelo. Westbrook's defense has always been overrated to me. He gambles too much. He doesn't play good one-on-one -on -one defense. And to me, that's part and parcel of, of his kind of scatterbrain persona. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a big swing. And it wasn't tough to foresee. In fact, when Robertson got hurt before the deadline, I turned to our friend Brian Windhorst and asked if the loss of Robertson was so lethal Presti might actually consider dealing Paul George. Now, follow me here. The idea would be that by acquiring PG in the first place, Presti had already accomplished the most important thing, which was 
convincing Russ that OKC was dedicated to winning and that Russ should sign that big extension. Of course, the idea had been to next convince PG to resign on the strength of making a strong playoff run this year. But without Robertson, it was hard already before the trade deadline to see OKC getting past the second round. And therefore, it was worth at least asking if maybe it would be smarter to deal PG for some value before risking him leaving a free agency like Kevin Durant. Not shockingly at the time, the answer Presti gave all our reporters was a strong no. In early February, the Thunder were feeling confident in both the relationships they built with George and their chances, even without Robertson, to still compete. Yeah, but you know what? I think that Paul George is going to be out. I don't see him stay. I don't see him staying with the OKC Thunder. And I believe that the way that the Lakers have played in the last two months is showing not only him but LeBron that the LA Lakers could be a viable place for the both of them to go. And you have Paul George at shooting guard. You have Lonzo at point guard, of course, you have LeBron at small forward, you have Julius Randle, and possibly they can bring in a, a stretch five and see what they can do with that. But I don't see Paul George coming back to the OKC Thunder, not with how this team is finishing. Once again, they could possibly not make the playoffs. Please keep that in mind. Remember when Russ was asked what his sales pitch to PG would be this summer? His answer was, quote, the sales pitch is going to be when we win a championship. And Russ said that because he knows that that's the only way that they'll be able to justify to Paul George why he should stay in OKC. Anything less than that, Russ knows that Paul George is going to leave. Like they would have to go to the Western Conference Finals and lose in seven at Golden State or at Houston for Paul George to stay. At the very least, that. That was actually just a month ago. Sure feels like a lot longer. Right now, the Thunder sit in seventh place in the West. They're act- For now. They're actually, though, tied in the loss column with the Clippers, who are in ninth. Are you keeping Paul George if you don't even make the playoffs? Absolutely not. The question is, is Paul George keeping you if you don't make the playoffs? And the answer is absolutely not. Maybe those relationships the front office has faith in, maybe they are strong enough to convince PG to reinvest. It's too early to say, but last night sure felt like a statement about something bigger than just a look. And no one's talking about Carmelo because Carmelo has been probably the most overrated player in, in the NBA in the last 30 plus years, to be quite frank with you. He needs to go somewhere where he could be a sixth or seventh man and play his role and bring in and bring points off the bench and guard the opposing team's reserves because that's all he can guard. He can't guard any starters in the NBA. Carmelo Anthony cannot guard any starters in the NBA, period. All he is right now is a volume shooter, a guy with terrible feet, slow legs, and no explosiveness. That's what he is. A guy who wants to park out on the elbow, pound the ball, and maybe make a few mid-range jumpers. And hopefully if he's hot, make three or four three-pointers in a game. And you're thankful for that. Just a loss. Oh my, how things have changed. All right, so, so what do you think? You're looking at these last 20 or so games of the season. What do you guys think they have to do for Prince Paul George? This is a place I want to be from this summer next on. Hey, look, I mean, the rough whiteboard is still relatively sensible. and not going to win a champion. No, it's not sensible at all. That's done. Right now, like I stated, they have to get to the Western Conference Finals and be extremely competitive for them to even have a chance to re-sign Paul George. And Carmelo is gone, as he should be. He's done. He's he's used goods, washed up. Championship, but I think the idea is, is, look, you've got to win. This is a guy who came into the league year two, is playing Miami Heat in a hard-fought May series. Years three and four, going down to a, what, four, two, and four, three. And on June 3rd, playing for the right to go to the MSO, that's his baseline. And at the end of the day, yes, they're going to have to make assurances. We'll shore up the depth. We got a bad break with Pat Patterson. The bench wasn't where it was. But I think ultimately they have to have a very nice run into May, win a first round series, equip themselves well. They're in seventh, tied in the loss column for ninth right now. Yeah, but how far are they out of third? Uh, yeah, that's, and that's, that's an interest. That's an important Just because that, that West the stand, is so Yeah, the standings are misleading because it, it you know, they're not really seventh. Like, you're not good enough to be third. You're just... The standings are not misleading, Amin El Hassan. And I usually love your commentary. They are not misleading, sir. No. The Thunder, for the most part, have all their stars. Now, they're making a big deal about the loss of Roberson. 
But we all know that Roberson was going to be their major Achilles heel on offense when the playoffs came. Roberson is not supposed to cause them to collapse like this. Not when you have three players who style themselves as quote unquote superstars. Westbrook is supposed to be an MVP caliber player. As Max Kellerman will call him a five star player. As I already told you brothers, he is not a five star player. Sorry. Not, not on my scale. Westbrook, James Hardhead, them niggas are not five star players. There are four five-star players right now. And I say this all the time. LeBron, KD, Steph Curry, and a healthy Kawhi Leonard. And Anthony Davis is, is about to push his way into that five-star category. I have him at about 4.7, 4.8. There's a difference now between AD and the 4.5 guys. The 4.5 guys are Westbrook, Hardhead, Kyrie, and a couple other guys. But... AD is he's knocking on the door, but he has to do something big in the playoffs. Heard you just there's so many teams and they're all separated by a game or two. Well, I mean, they are really separated. Yeah. <laughs> the tiebreakers are all there for a reason, but yeah. Okay, the okay so then they upset in the first round. Right, now right. they beat a three, or you yeah, know, yeah. That's, the, the, that's what I guess I'm saying. Yeah. The, the, the difference between the seven seed and the three seed is not as vast as what you would imagine in a regular year. But I think there was two things a couple of months ago when we talked about this. Mm-hmm. What does it? Uh, need for Paul George to stay in Oklahoma City. So two things. Obviously, their success is one thing. Mm-hmm. The other is how he's used, how he's utilized. Because at the time when we talked about this, he was basically top of Cephalosha. Hey, defend, stand in the corner, we'll get you some threes. Sure. Which, even if they won 75 games and won a championship, that's not very fulfilling for a player of his stature, right? It, you, you know, you mentioned going deep and almost going to the finals as a main piece, not as a guy just standing in the corner and be quiet, right? And so... Kudos to them. They figured out their offensive issues, and they did feature him, and he did feel a part of, of this thing, and they were very successful. But now the other part comes in, the team success. And so being a seventh seed isn't as important to me as getting out of the first round. Yeah, but I mean, come on, brother. If they're a seventh seed, they're either facing Houston or Golden State in the first round. They can't be a seventh seed. You have to think about that. I know that you guys are trying to push the narrative that the West is so stacked. I think that outside of those top two teams, the West is very mediocre, actually. When I think of a stacked West, I think of years where you had five or six teams that won 50 games. That's class. Now, you're going to have what you're going to have this year. You're going to have two teams that went over 60 games. And you're going you're to probably have six teams that are somewhere between 49 and 42 wins by the, by the end of the season. Or maybe, hell, maybe even 47 to 44 wins. They, may, they might be that packed. From three to eight. But the top two teams are going to win well over 60. This is not like the early 90s Western Conference where you had San Antonio and Phoenix and Houston and Seattle and Utah all winning over 50 games. It's not like that. So it's it's not that stacked. And they could not go into the playoffs at a seven seed and say, well, let's just win a first round matchup. It's not that easy. Not when you're going to be playing either Houston or Golden State. They have to be at least six. Because they go into the playoffs saying, well, we're the sixth seed, but we're playing Portland. At least they'll feel like they can beat Portland. Having a real chance at playing for a chance to go to the finals, that's more important than where we were seated in the playoffs. Right, and then, no, sir. Totally disagree. And that's why last night <coughs> gets us to this question. It's that, hey, they were across the floor from a team that at the beginning of the season, they thought they might finish better than, right? They were like, oh, we could be right. better than the Rockets. We could be the challengers to Golden State. <laughs> Well, that's what I thought. I thought they were going to be better than the Rockets this year. At least in regards to their overall lineup, I thought that they would, that they would bode far more of a, of a problem for Golden State than the Rockets would, who I believe would just be a team trying to mimic Golden State style. But just looking at the Rockets, what impressed me the most about them is their synergy. OKC has no synergy. It's, take, it's taken them 60-plus percent of the season just to approximate some form of offensive synergy. And they still don't have that down packed. And since Roberson has gone down, they've had no defensive synergy. And that's a shame that with all the so-called star power that they have, they have not been able to come together a little bit better on the defensive end. That shows that they don't particularly like each other. I don't think that many of those, of those players like Melo very much. They, <coughs> last night pretty concretely showed us that is not the case. Obviously, the last couple months have showed us that's not the case. So if that's not going to be their sell to Paul George, sort of what is it going to be? You guys think that they can still do enough in these it, last 
these last few weeks to be like, yes, this is the place. Yeah, because for me, it's not the standings. It's how do we do in the playoffs. If they lose the, they beat the Rockets in the second round. If they lose the Warriors, or if they beat the Warriors and go to the finals, I think those are all, do no matter where they. Watching that game. With- Bro, once again, they can't have a seventh seed and say we beat the Rockets in the second round. If they have seven seed, they're gonna be playing the Rockets or the Warriors in the first round. So it is imperative that they can get at least the six seed. They have to get the six. I don't know what the hell's in that cup that Amin is drinking. Normally, the, normally the man is much smarter than that. Hey, game last night, you no, think that they can beat say, the Rockets I'm, in the second round? I'm not saying they can. I'm saying them where they finish in the playoff picture is irrelevant unless where they finish is nine. It'll be a momentum play, right? That's highly possible. Right, like, okay, yeah, they, they win a first-round series right. against the San Antonio, against the Minnesota. They equip themselves well. Sure. Uh, he, he's featured on the move in situations at the elbow where he can right. just absolutely, you know, get in. <coughs> you know, there, there is a, there, there's a, there's a, there's a functional place for him in a lineup that seems like, I could play like this, yeah. yeah. All right, well, this is good. This gives you your mission, Oklahoma City Thunder. On the end or end? But anyway, we'll see what happens to OKC. I don't think that they're going to go very far because at this point, I don't believe that they believe in their team. I don't believe that they believe in their coach, and I don't believe that they believe in their season because they don't have any leaders. Westbrook is an alpha who's not a leader because he does, you know, he just doesn't inspire his teammates. And people can act like, oh, well, it's great. We love Russ. Nah, he's not that guy because mentally he's not all together. Paul George is not a leader. You know, he's your second guy. He's your second banana. And Carmelo, come on, man. That man's like, <laughs> that man's like, 20 day old bread he's stiff and it's time to throw him out in the trash no disrespect but anyway peace